at Milano Pad. Uh, hello, Arnaud de la here with uh, my friend uh, Yokaku. We prepared a video about the clues to the diagnosis of nevoid melanoma. Uh, this is part of the Non Artificial Intelligence in Pathology project, and there will be other videos showing uh, rotations of a great number of cases. And this video is to, to prepare and show you what to look for at uh, low, medium, and high power um, vision. So about uh, nevoid melanoma, everyone has a different image in mind when it comes to this diagnosis. Uh, what, which nevus are we talking about? And here we'll mainly be talking about uh, lesions that will, that will be resembling common nevus or congenital-like nevus, like in the example uh, showed here. In the past, uh, such tumors were, co were sometimes called minimal deviation melanoma, uh, especially by Reed. Uh, this terminology is currently not recommended by the WHO. Regarding the prognostic, uh, there are currently no conclusions uh, saying that there is a better or worse prognosis for nevoid melanoma compared to superficial spreading melanoma with identical breast slow. Uh, there was a large study from the ERTC um, a couple of years ago uh, that described two distinct architectures. One is the papillomatous uh, type uh, that we also refer here as exophytic type. And in this study, there was a predilection of this type for the head and trunk. And these tumors were mainly found in adults. And the second type was uh, the maturing type. Here we will refer as flat elevated type which was more frequently found on the limbs, and it was found in people that were older. In uh, the current WHO, these subtypes uh, are found as the papillomatous uh, architecture, exophytic architecture. Then there's the band-like flat architecture called maturing or small cell nevoid melanoma. And then there is a more wedge-shaped silhouette called nodular uh, nevoid melanoma. In the inside two, uh, often nested, large nested nevoid melanoma. So trying to classify our cases between these three ar architectures, we often, often found overlapping features between two of the subtypes or even sometimes combining all three. And to simplify, we really uh, decided to separate lesions between exophytic architecture and what we call flat elevated uh, architecture. Here's an example of a lesion showing both exophytic and a large nested in situ uh, components. In our views, we consider nevoid melanoma as a subtype of superficial spreading melanoma. You can sometimes see remnants of a congenital-like nevus in the background, and most of them have a BRAF or NRAS uh, mutation. Um, and uh, in we can also have a spectrum going from SSM on one side to a nevoid melanoma uh, next to it, uh, like in this case. So we will separate the low power view for exophytic and flat elevated and start with the exophytic subtype. So the low power checklist is here. We will detail now uh, with illustrations. So starting with uh, exophytic architecture, it's not always papillomatous, that can be either slight or really uh, marked, and we can also have polypoid or smooth surface uh, lesions. There's often an extension along the hair follicle that gives the lesion a mushroom shape. Here's some examples of this, and uh, basically it depends on the sections. Some areas will look more like uh, exophytic uh, or a mushroom shape. Here are some illustrations on the border of the lesion. We can have this colorette of epidermis uh, on both sides. A key element to the diagnosis is the high density of the dermal component with large nests or sheets of cells. This high density can even fill the grand zone uh, in many areas. When the papillomatis is important, there's a risk of overestimation of the breath through thickness. Now moving to flat elevated subtype, here's the low power checklist. Uh, we will detail, uh, you can pause if you want to see the details. Here's a typical example of this flat elevated architecture. And here are more examples showing that there's always this high density and the upper dermis. It's made of nests and sheets that are more quiescent. And there's are some variations in the distributions and even lesions that go deeper can have a more wedge shape architecture. Another element is what we call the inverted shouldering or coat hanger signs, meaning when you have 
the dermal expansion going much further on the sides than where your junctional component stops. So here's why we also call it, try to call it this coat hanger sign. And this, this inverted shouldering or coat hanger sign should always raise suspicion for a nevoid melanoma. Now we're moving to the medium power checklist that is common for both exophytic and flat elevated subtypes. Most important is pseudo maturation. You can pause to look at the details. Uh, so we have this pseudo maturation, meaning that there is a diminution of size of the cells and nests go from top to bottom. And we th this is what resembles what we can see in most uh, nevi. So here are some examples of this maturation. Uh, that occurs throughout the lesion. Some lesions are purely dermal and we can have focally some uh, lymphocytic infiltration uh, on one side. We can find an association with a superficial spreading melanoma or inside to a nested melanoma often on the side on one side of the tumors. Here's some example. We have this pagetoid scatter of pulverocytes in this case, or just a junctional uh, lentiginous component. Here are some other examples that are really uh, a symmetrical distribution. In some cases, we will find small remnants of uh, nevi cells, often very uh, focal uh, distribution. Now we're moving to the high power checklist. So first, of course, is the nevoid cytology. The cells have these round or oval small nuclei. In some instances, you can have multinucleations or a more important atypia. Here we have pulverocytic uh, cytology. Some cases can be more spindle shaped. In some cases, there can be this cohesion uh, and sort of vascular uh, cavitation. Mitotic uh, activity is often frequently found in the superficial dermis. Here's an overview of the results of IHC commonly found. In detail, the proliferation marker often will have a top-heavy distribution that will match the presence of the mitotic figures in the upper dermis. We can find strong prime positivity and P16 loss. These are the usual markers for these melanomas, although PREM can sometimes be less uh, obviously positive. HAB45 can have a zonation pattern. In our experience, BRAF uh, positivity is uh, slightly more frequent in the exophytic architecture, but this is only a trend. And it also can be found in the flat elevated subtypes. And we have a little bit the opposite trend for NRAS that in our experience was a little bit more frequent in the flat elevated subtypes compared to the ex ele uh, exophytic uh, architecture. In this last part, we'll talk about the differential diagnosis with some illustration of each of them. Here are the, uh, uh, the typical unotype uh, nevi that has a similar exophytic uh, architecture. Uh, this, this is the congenital pattern type of nevus uh, that has this uh, standard shouldering pattern, meaning the junctional component is going further than the dermal component. Another differential di diagnosis is Intrac 1 fused spitz nevus also often has this nevoid cytology and BAP1 inactivated tumors uh, often have also nevoid and epithelioid cytology and the dermis. Some variants of uh, superficial spreading melanoma, ex nevus, uh, often can be uh, reminiscent of the nevoid cytology. There is a more diffuse uh, pagetoid uh, spreading in these tumors. Nodular, nodular melanoma is another differential diagnosis. You will find a more aggressive um, cytomorphology with a stronger atypia and proliferation. There can be a frequent ulceration, which is not found in uh, nevoid melanoma. We hope you enjoyed this video. Now you'll be able to look at the rotation of cases and look at the clues for uh, nevoid melanoma. We'll see you soon for some new uh, content.